So today I'm substituting for Professor Enderton, and uh, he'll be back on Monday. Um, so I'll follow his lecture very carefully. Um, <clears throat> so the first thing that uh, he wanted me to discuss was the uh, independent, uh, independence of three or more events. Of three or more events. Okay, let's just look at exa an example for. I mean, let's just look at this uh, the following. If I have uh, event A, B, and C, so I have events uh, A, B, and C. If A, B, and C are events, and A and B are independent, and B and C are independent, and A and C are independent, are, all, are, are, are the three events somehow independent? Yes or no? Well, let's look at an example. Okay. If I have, say, event F. F is first child is a boy. So two parents have, so parents have, uh, have kids. The first child is a boy. And S is the second child is a boy. And D is uh, the two children do not have the same gender. OK, so F is the first child as a boy, S is the second child as a boy, and D is the event that the two children do not, do not have the same gender. Uh, how do we test? Are, are these events, is F and D, are, is F and D, are, are F and D independent? Are F and S independent? Are S and D independent? Let's check this. How do we check this? Well, we want to check F and S uh, independent. Question uh, mark. F and D independent. And uh, let's see. S and D independent. Well, first of all, what is the probability of F? What is the probability that the first child is a boy? Is that right? It's supposed to half. What is the probability that uh, the second child, S, is a boy? I'm sorry? One half. Right, OK. What's the probability that the genders are different? Well, how do we figure this out? Well, what are my possibilities? I could have boy, 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 girl, girl, boy, or girl, girl. I have four possibilities. How many of these possibilities are, uh, are um, siblings with different genders? Two. So the probability that I have a that the two siblings have uh, different genders, P of D, is what? One half. Two over four. OK. So now the question is, what is the probability of F, the probability of F, uh, given, well, what is the probability of f intersect d? What's that equal to? What's the probability that the first child uh, uh, is a, what's the probability that the first child is a boy and the, uh, and the two children have different genders? How many ways can that happen? One. It's only one way. How many options do I have? Four, so that's the probability. One fourth. What's the probability that S of S intersect D? In other words, the second child is a boy, but the uh, but the um, uh, the sexes of the children are different. The genders are different. Well, the second child is a boy, so I'm in this case, or this case, 
but the genders have to be different, so I only have one option. So again, what is the, what is the answer? One fourth, exactly. Now, what is the probability of F and S? The first child and the second child are both boys. What's that probability? Right, again, why? Because there's only one option. There's only one outcome that, uh, that's the outcome we want, and there are four possible outcomes, so the probability is 1 over 4. But notice that this is equal to probability of F times probability of D. This is equal to probability of S times probability of D. And this is equal to the probability of F times the probability of S. So these events are, in fact, uh, pairwise independent. OK, what's the probability? of F intersect S intersect D. What's that probability? What's the probability? How many ways can I get uh, that I have a boy is the first one born, a boy is the second one born, and the genders are different? Zero, right. So the probability is zero. So even though they're pairwise independent, this, even though they're pairwise independent, it's not equal to P of F times P of S, not equal to P of S times P of S times P of D. So this shows that, this shows that even though you may have uh, pairwise independence, the, uh, the events aren't actually um, uh, uh, independent. I mean, the, the intersection of them is not necessarily the product here. So this, this also motivates the definition. We want to, we say that events are independent if, uh, that, that a collection of events, say three events, is independent if P of F uh, intersect S intersect D, probability of F intersect S intersect D is actually equal to P of F times P of S times D, P of D. That's independence for, for more than, uh, for more than um, one variable. Okay, does everybody have, uh, understand this? Okay. Yes? So you said that the board before you could go on fourth, you said that because P of S times P of D and all those other ones equals that, equal one fourth, that that would make them pairwise independent? Well, here, see, I know that P of F intersect P of D, I, the probability of F intersect D is one fourth. Right. So that's equal to the probability of F times the probability of D. So they're independent. That's how I compute, that's how I find that they're independent. then it wouldn't be independent. Right. Because remember, this definition is really equivalent to saying, this, def this definition of, uh, of independence is equivalent to saying the probability, see, of A given B. If A and B are two events, the, the conditional probability of A given B should just equal the probability of A. For instance, if I flip a coin, right? I flip, I flip a coin uh, twice. The probability that I have heads on the second, the probability uh, the, the, that um, the, the, coin, the second coin flip has nothing to do with the first coin flip. They're independent. So even if I say, uh, if I say uh, what is the probability of getting a heads on the second coin flip, uh, given that I have uh, a tails on the first coin flip, what is the probability? It's the same probability as getting a heads whether I did the first flip or not. So, um, so this, is, this is a definition that I like to think of when I think of a, uh, Independence, and of course, this is just equal to probability of A uh, intersect B divided by the probability of B. If that's equal to P of A, that happens if and only if P of A intersect B is equal to P of A times P of B by just multiplying through by the denominator. Does everybody see this? Okay, so that's that's one way of thinking about it. Now, okay, let's take a look uh, at a given problem. So the problem is, uh, he wants us to look at the following problem. Now, assume that A and B are events uh, 
uh, such that P, the probability of A intersect B, uh, is equal to 0.28. The probability of A union B is equal to 0.82. And the probability of A complement intersect B, this is equal to 0.12. Now my question to you is, can you tell from this information whether or not um, A and B are independent? I mean, if you just look at it, is it obvious to you? No, of course not. So we have to, we have to find, uh, we have to figure out how to analyze this information. Well, it's not too bad. Let me just erase this for a second, and then I can start writing. So we can draw out the following diagram. So this is, uh, so we have our sample, we have, uh, we have uh, uh, our sample set is divided into A and A complement, and it's divided into B and B complement. What is the intersection of A and A complement? What is A intersect A complement equal to? It's empty, right? So. And what is the probability of A union, the probability of A complement? I'm sorry? One, right. Why? Because everything is either in A or A complement. It's either in A or it's not in A. So, um, <clears throat> so the, the point is, is that we have certain information we're given. We're given that A intersect B is 0.28. So which, you, which, which region here represents A intersect AB? I mean, A, A intersect B? This one. So there's 0.28% chance, there, there's a 28% chance of being here. 0.28 is a probability of being in there. Now, as well, we're given probability of A complement intersect B. What is that? That's this box. So this is 0.12, 12% chance of being there. Now, the probability of B is therefore what? What is the probability of B? 0.4, this plus this, because, because B, the probability of B is equal to the probability of B uh, intersect A plus the probability of B intersect A complement. These sets, B intersect A, B intersect A complement, these are uh, disjoint sets, and, uh, and, um, and B is contained in, the, in, their, in their union because A uh, union A complement is a whole space. Okay, so that makes sense. So B here is equal to 0.4. Now, what's the next thing we might want to find? Well, we can actually find this guy right here. We can find what's in here. How do we find what's there? Well, this is what's in B. This is the likelihood of being in B. This is the likelihood of being in A. So, probability. Of A, un of A, sorry, intersect B plus the probability of A complement intersect B plus the probability of A intersect B complement. This is equal to the probability of A union B, right? This is equal to what? What is the probability of A intersect B? 0.28. In fact, we already know that this plus this is what? 0.4. So 0.4 plus probability of A intersect B complement is equal to what? Probability of A union B. We're given the probability of A union B. What's that? I'm sorry? 0.82. So probability of A intersect B complement is just equal to? 0.42. Okay, cool. So this is 0.42. So what is the probability of, uh, of A? What's the probability that A, that A occurs? 0.7. Probability of A equals 0.7. Okay, what's the probability 
of B complement. Probability of B is 0.4, so the, the probability of B complement is 0.6, because the sum has to be 1. So we can solve this guy. We can solve what this is down here. So what, is, what has to be in this square? What has to be in that region? Yeah, 0.42. So 0.42 plus probability of A complement intersect B complement is equal to what? 0.6. So probability of, uh, of uh, A complement intersect B complement equals what? What number? 0 0.18. 0 0.18. Now, actually, we didn't need to calculate that if we didn't want to. Um, the, the point is, is uh, what is, uh, if I want to test for independence, what do I need to show? If I want to, if I want to say that, uh, that, that if A and B are to be independent, what should, what should happen? You know, A and B are independent if and only if. A and B independent if and only if probability of A intersect B is equal to probability of A times probability of B, right? What is the probability of A? What is the probability of A intersect B? 0.28, right? 0.28. What goes here? What's the probability of A? Come on, shout it out. Be enthusiastic. Point, I don't hear you. What was that? Come on, 0.7. Yeah, OK. It's 0.7. What is the probability of B? 0.4. What is 0.7 times 0.4 equal to? Yay. Excellent. They're independent. So, no, but think about this, really. You were given some information, and all you knew, all you knew is you had two events, and you had, uh, you had this data, and from that you were able to tell that A and B were independent. That's pretty nice, right? You were able to actually figure this out. So, uh, let's, uh, let's, try some, uh, let's try some other things. So the problem is, uh, the problem here is this. What if I have two cards? I have a deck of cards. I have, I have a deck of cards, right? Um, you pull out a, I pull out a card. What's the probability that the second card is a 10? I have two cards. I have a deck of cards. 52, 52 cards in a deck, right? Uh, how, many, uh, how many 10s are in the deck? Four. OK. So I have this deck, and uh, I, I pick out a card. I look at it. Now I give you the card. Now I give you the deck. What is the probability that, uh, that, uh, that, the, um, that the card you pull is a 10? I'm sorry? What is it? Who, who says 4 and 51? Who says it? Who says 4 and 52? 4 and 52. Why should it be 4 and 52? Right. So it doesn't matter whether I go first or second. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter whether I pull something out. If you're, you're picking up a card, you pick up some card from the deck, uh, it should be 4 and After I draw. So no, no. Yes or no? It's still yes. Right, I'm just taking a car and pulling it from the deck, the probability is 4 and 52. So let's, 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 let's actually go through this calculus. This is a fast way of thinking about it. I mean, I haven't told you what card it is. I could have asked you to, I could have split the deck and, and gone in the middle, and you could have uh, picked a card from the middle. It'd still be 4, 4 and 52. So let's see, let's see how this works. Uh, the short answer, of course, short answer. Short answer is that you just forget the first card. So the probability that you pull a 10 is equal to 4 and 52 
which is equal to 1 and 13. OK. But here, uh, a little bit longer of an answer. We use a probability, we use one of these tree diagrams to, uh, to help us out. So let's, let's go through this. OK, so let's look at the longer answer now. <clears throat> Now, what if I, uh, what if, uh, okay, so I have, I have two possibilities. The card that I drew could be a 10 or it might not be a 10. So I have the possibility that I drew a 10 or that I drew something other than a 10, right? What's a, poss what's a probability that I drew a 10? 1 in 13. What's a probability that I um, did not choose a 10? Why couldn't it be? 7 and 13, or 8 and 13. Why did it have to be 12 and 13? It's a compliment. It's the some of the probabilities has to be 1. So as soon as I know this, I know that this has to be 12 and 13 without even thinking much more about what's going on. It's a complement. It's got to be 1 minus the other one. So now from this situation, I have another possibility. What is a, possibi what is a probability given that I pulled a 10 that the next guy is a 10? No, I don't replace the 10. I keep them. I'm sorry? 3 and 51. Yes. What's, what about here? I, didn't, I, I picked a card and it wasn't a 10. So now it's going to be 4 and 51. Right, exactly. So what is the probability that I picked a 10? Remember, this is the law of total probability. This is equal to the probability that I chose uh, a 10, given that I chose a 10, bef you know, this is a, you know, given, given that I chose a 10 before, time is probability of 10. So I'll put a 10, 1, and I'll put a 10, 2, 10, 1, 10, 2, you know, just to, just to denote that it's separate events. So this probability, 10, 2, the second card was a 10, is equal to the pro probability that the, the relative probability uh, that the second was a 10 and the first was a a 10 times the probability the first was a 10, plus the probability that the second was a 10, given that the first was not a 10, times the probability that the first was not a 10. So what do these numbers look like? What is this number? What's this number here? It's that, right? This is 3 and 51 times, what's the probability uh, that it's a uh, 10? First one's a 10. One, 1 in 13. Plus, what's the probability of this? What's this um, relative probability equal to? What is it? Why? It's this, it's this guy right here, isn't it? OK, so it's 4 and 51. 4 and 51. And what's the uh, probability that the first guy was, uh, was, not, a, uh, was not a 10? 12 over 13. So what does this look like? This looks like something over 51 times 13. And what is that something? 48 plus 3. What is 48 plus 3? 51. And that's equal to, of course, 1 and 13. What we already knew had to be true, right? So thinking about it in two different ways, we get the same answer, of course. Well, we better. Now finally, I'd like to give this last problem uh, let me make sure I have time. Oh, great, we have plenty of time. Um, so, <clears throat> problem. Chance of rain. OK, let's look at the chance of rain problem. Now, this problem, uh, this problem is sort of interesting. It says 40% chance of rain on Monday. And we've got a 30% chance 
on Tuesday. And we have a 50% chance uh, of no rain either day. So, assuming that these uh, forecasts are correct, we would like to know, A, what is probability of rain on Monday and Tuesday? That's the first thing. And the second thing we would like to know, B, is uh, um, are the events rain on Monday and rain on Tuesday independent? Okay. So we'd like to answer these, these two questions. So how do we do this? What would, how would you start this problem? I'm sorry? Oh, no. So how do you start this problem? Well, let's, let's uh, draw our box here. And let's see, uh, let's, let's sort of divide things up and, you know, um, um, organize our information. So this is, uh, actually, let me go over here and do it. So I have a little more room to write. OK, so I have Tuesday. And I've got Monday. So I've got Monday and Tuesday, right? And, uh, and uh, I have no rain. And I have rain. And I've got no rain. And I've got rain. So um, now. How do I do this? What information do, am I given? What information am I given? I have 50% chance of no rain either day. Where does that go? Actually, let me, let me, let me write this differently. Uh, rain and no rain. Just makes it easier for me. So no rain and no rain. So uh, so what's it? Wh where where does this uh, fifty percent? Fifty percent. I have no rain, rain either day. So I've got a point five that goes there, right? Now what else? What else is given? I have forty percent chance of rain on Monday. So I've got a forty percent chance here. Point four chance here that it rains. So the sum of these things has to equal point uh, four. Now I have a thirty percent chance that it rains. Um, I have a 30% chance that uh, it rains on, uh, on Tuesday, right? So where does that go? Bottom right. 30% Bottom right. chance here. OK, so what else do I do? If I have a 0 0.4 right here, right? So I, I, how do I, what, what do I do? Where, where do I go from here? What do I do? How do I fill my boxes? Think about it. I don't want to give it to you right away. I'm sorry? There's a 0.6% chance that it doesn't rain. Why? Monday, there's a 40% chance that it rains. And the chance that it doesn't rain is what? 60% chance. Shout it out. 60% chance. So what goes here? 0.1 goes there. That's cool. What goes here then? 0.2. Good, right? What goes here then? 0.2. Fine. So 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.1. Now, what is the chance that it doesn't rain on Tuesday? 0 0.7. 0 0.7, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. We have everything we need. 
And so now we can ask, are m and t independent? Well, what is the probability of m intersect t? What is that equal to? Point that it rains on Monday and that it rains on Tuesday, what is it? Point 0.2. What is the probability that it rains on Monday? Rains on Monday is 0.4. What is the probability that it rains on Tuesday? 0.3. What does that equal? What does that equal? 0.12. So are these things equal? So no. So the point is here is that, uh, is that we, have a, we have these probabilities are such that it's not equal probability whether it rains on Monday. Uh, you know, the, event, the event of raining on Monday and the event of raining on Tuesday are not independent events. They depend on each other somehow. So, uh, so now let's look at uh, the other problem that we can answer with this. Uh, wait, let me knock that up a little higher. So the second problem is, uh, are the events, um, so what is the probability of rain Monday and Tuesday? Oh, we, we did this. So we did both problems, didn't we? What is the probability that rains Monday and Tuesday? So what is probability of uh, raining Monday and Tuesday is probability of m intersect t, which is 0.2. So, we, uh, so we've solved the problem. So we solved part A and part B. Part A was 0.2, part B is no, uh, is yes, is no, they're not independent. Now. Um, okay, so I have one question that I'd like to ask you just to, uh, just to see uh, a challenge question. Challenge question. Okay, guys. Two parents, so uh, you know, parents have two kids. One of the children is a girl. What is the probability that the second child is a girl. I'm sorry? One half, right? OK. So if I say that the, the two that parents have two kids, one is a girl, OK? The probability that, uh, that Girl is second child. So second child is a girl. Equals, and you say one half, right? Who says one half? Who says something different? Who thinks it must be something different? Why do you think it's one half? That's your sample set, if uh, for you know without this additional additional uh, consideration. Now, are the probability the probabilities of each one of these guys are they all the same? Yeah, they're all boy boy, girl boy, boy girl, girl girl. All are what percentage? What what, what possibility? One fourth. one fourth, right? Except I've given you a different piece of information, an additional piece of information. What's the additional piece of information? Huh? No, one is a girl. I didn't tell you the first is a girl. I told you one is a girl. I told you one child is a girl. So you think it's one third? Wait, how many ways can I get girl second? Two. One, two. So what's the probability? Probability is two thirds. Not one half. So these are examples of some interesting questions that you can get in probability that, uh, that um, uh, aren't necessarily so obvious. Now let me give you another question. You like this question of independence, right? So I noticed some comments. It seemed a little bit too easy for you, right? It wasn't too bad, right? I heard some comments. Of course, it's 113. However, what if I altered the problem just a little bit?
what if I told you something about the second, what if I told you something about the card that I drew? So your, your question was no longer, your question was no longer one of, uh, of, uh, of well, I can, I can ignore both pieces, of, I can ignore the first piece of information because I don't know what it is anyway. And so it should obviously be 1 13th, right? That was this, that was the, uh, the reasoning, the first reasoning that we all sort of understood. Well, what happens, what happens if that's not the case? What happens if I give you some information? Here's my deck of cards, right? And I deal out two. I pick mine up and I look at mine and I realize that mine is a diamond. What's the probability that yours is a 10? So two cards are drawn. What is the probability that you get a 10 given that you know that I chose a diamond? What is that equal to? OK. What's the probability that you just choose a 10 out of the deck? 113. OK. What's the probability that you choose a 10 in the deck given that I've chosen a diamond? What's the probability? I choose, I choose, I take two cards out of the deck. I give you one, I have one. I go, oh, I have a diamond. What's the probability that you have a 10? 113. It is, in fact, and we have to, we have to show this. So it is 113. Now, what is the probability, however, that, uh, that you choose a 10 given that I've gotten a king? What does that probability look like? Four out of 51, it's different. So the question is, right, because see the thing is, is uh, you know, this is, this, is, this is fairly clear. I've chosen a card, you know that you now have 51 cards that you, to look from, and you know that uh, that, uh, that card that was chosen was not a 10. So therefore there are four 10s still left in the deck and you have 51 cards to choose from and therefore you have four over 51, uh, uh, four, four over 51 is your probability for picking a 10. Here, I want you to think about this at home. Think about it at home. Why is it true? Uh, but the point is, is that is this event, uh, is the event of choosing first a king and choosing later a 10, are those independent events? Yes or no? No. They'd, they'd only be independent if this was equal to 1 over 13 or 4 over 52. How about this? Is choosing a, 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 a diamond independent from choosing the 10? Yes. So uh, if you wanted to uh, go to a uh, blackjack table, for example, and place bets, it might be behoove you to know how many cards are, you know, the cards that are, that are up. If you, if you can look at other people's cards and say, ah, I see a king, I see a this, I see a that, I see lots of high cards, then it affects the, uh, the probability that what you have, what you're going to get next, is, say, a low card or a high card. And that's one way to uh, play odds. So in any case, Go over this example at home, I think, and try to take a look at it. Um, I've gone through most of the notes, essentially gone through the notes, so you guys can go early and enjoy a, a nice Friday afternoon. <laughs>